Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, FAA Administrator Dixon will personally fly the 737 MAX simulator. Lawmakers seek to ban U.S. government from buying Chinese drones. And SpaceX is trying to buy Boca Chica, Texas. Happy Friday and welcome to the show. I'm Sophie Herlock. FAA Administrator Stephen Dixon is planning to travel to Seattle to personally fly a 737 MAX simulator, as well as meet with Boeing officials prior to the airplane's recertification. Dixon said he plans to make the trip this week in order to make an evaluation of software changes to the airplane's MCAS, which has been implicated in two accidents earlier this year, leading to a worldwide grounding of the airliner. He said the FAA has no firm timeline for a return to service for the 737 MAX and guarantees the airplane will not be flying again until he's satisfied it's the safest thing out there. Boeing CEO Dennis Mullenberg has said Boeing hopes to formally submit the software changes to the FAA this month and that he anticipates the 737 MAX will be cleared to fly at least in the U.S. by the end of the year. But he also acknowledges that other aviation regulators may not follow the FAA's lead when it comes to recertifying the airplane. We'll be right back with Around the Patch. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Today is a new dawn. With a new name. Un nuevo logotipo. A new factor. Und einen globalen Kundenfokus. We are Continental Aerospace Technologies and we stand behind you. Welcome back. It's time for today's trip around the patch, where we'll be taking a quick look at some interesting news flying out of the aviation industry. Iridium Communications and OneWeb entered into a MOU to work together toward a combined service offering. This offering would be designed to make it easier for their mutual partners to offer unique bundling and co-marketing opportunities for the Iridium Certis L-Band services and the OneWeb's KuBand service. The offering would leverage the strengths of their respective low Earth orbit networks, and this is the first time LEO operators have collaborated to deliver services in L-Band and KuBand. The Coast Guard rescued a man after he ditched his plane in the Gulf of Mexico approximately 8 miles southeast of Southwest Pass, Louisiana on Sunday. Watch standards at the 8th Coast Guard District received a distress alert from an emergency locator transmitter at 11.46 a.m., as well as a notification from the Houston Air Route Traffic Control Center that a Southwest Airlines flight had relayed a mayday call from an unknown aircraft. The National Association of State Aviation Officials announced the members of the 2019-2020 board at Naseo's 80th Annual Convention and Trade Show in St. Paul, Minnesota. The board is comprised of state aviation directors or their selected representatives and will be led by John Binder in his role as chair. Aviation Partner says its unique blended winglet and split scimitar winglet technologies have saved the world's commercial and business jet operators more than 10 billion gallons of jet fuel, resulting in a corresponding global reduction of over 105 million tons of CO2 emissions. 10 billion gallons of jet fuel would operate API's hometown partner, Alaska Airlines' entire fleet of aircraft for nearly 14 years, or provide fuel for the roughly 450,000 cars in the city of Seattle for 34 years. We'll be right back with the rest of the news. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, 
Safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. The Sling 2, a modern economical flight training airplane for today's pilots. 120 knot crews, sporty handling, sliding bubble canopy, modern glass panel, and dependable Rotax power. Available in LSA or kit versions. Check it out at airplanefactory.com. Senators Rick Scott, Chris Murphy, Tom Cotton, Josh Hawley, Richard Blumenthal, and Marco Rubio introduced the American Security Drone Act of 2019, which prohibits the U.S. government from purchasing drones manufactured in countries identified as national security threats, like Iran and China. The American Security Drone Act prohibits federal departments and agencies from procuring any foreign commercial off-the-shelf drone or covered unmanned aircraft system manufactured or assembled in countries identified as national security threats and provides a timeline to end current use of these drones. Prohibits the use of federal funds awarded through contracts, grants, or cooperative agreements to state or local governments from being used to purchase foreign commercial off-the-shelf drones or covered unmanned aircraft systems manufactured or assembled in a country identified as a national security threat. Requires the Comptroller General of the United States to submit a report to Congress detailing the amount of foreign commercial off-the-shelf drones and covered unmanned aircraft systems procured by federal departments and agencies from countries identified as national security threats. SpaceX is attempting to buy as much property as it can in Boca Chica, Texas, a small village near the company's South Texas test facility. The company's initial plan was to build a full-scale space port to launch payloads into orbit from the Texas coast. SpaceX has been using its Boca Chica facility for testing of its Starhopper prototype, which recently flew to an altitude of 500 feet from a concrete pad just one and a half miles from the nearest residence in the village. After the Starhopper test flight in July ignited several brush fires, public safety warnings about possible explosions, and hopes for authorization from the FAA to launch orbital-class rockets from Texas, the company began sending letters to residents offering to buy their properties due to the disruption caused by launch activities. In the letter, SpaceX states they are committed to a fair and equitable process for acquiring the real estate and will offer residents three times the independently appraised fair market value of their property. And that's all for this week, everyone. Thank you so much for watching, and please subscribe and check us out on Twitter and on Facebook. If you want to stay up to date on the latest aviation and aerospace news this weekend, just head over to aero-news.net. I'll see you Monday.